I've always had this issue of where I'm very skeptical of certain things and um, I was born with it and I've just always had it and uh, that prophecy was exactly what I needed to hear to make me recognize that it was real in my life, the issue, and that it was a serious stumbling block and without it being relayed to me that that was the case from somebody who didn't even know me, um, I would have never accepted a, that, it, that it was really from God. God's plan is to manifest Christ in all people on earth. And it's happening. It's happening. His word started with that um, he saw me as a child and that God has been protecting me since a little girl. In and out of hospital, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out of hospital. And uh, God's really been protecting you. It hasn't been easy, it's been difficult, um, all of those things. God is your healer. I was nine years old. I've been in and out of the hospitals my entire life. I had a heart transplant when I was nine. He looked at me and said, you take medication, right? And I said, yes. See, Lord set you free of that. It's not, it's, I see medication that people told you you're going to use this the rest of your life. God says, you won't use that for the rest of your life. This is what I see. I see the doctor says, say, for the rest of your life, you're going to have to use this. There's no way, no other way. It's not God's heart. It's not, not his heart. It's not, it's not. I want you to, to know. And it's not, it's not that you have to decide, I'm going to lose it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. You're going to, you, you're going to have a doctor's appointment and the doctor is going to tell you that you better stop using this. The same, the same people that told you you will not live without it will be the people that will tell you that you cannot live with it. Since he has come, which was about about six or seven months ago, I've seen my cardiologist two times. Each appointment, she is just astounded by not only the progress that I've made health-wise, but also just the way I look. All of a sudden, my body could just absorb this medication better than it ever had before. So she's like, well, we have to decrease it. There's, you have to take less of it. There's no way around it. That the levels that she had seen in the blood work after that, they had been better than they had been in years and years and years. He started talking about me learning another language and he kept like, you couldn't figure out what he was saying and I was like, please don't let it be Spanish because I didn't like Spanish. See, you're going to, it's, it's like, um, um, uh, it's like, it looks like, um, uh, uh, what's it, Korea. Do you know what Korea is? Okay. <clears throat> this is what I see. Okay. I see this flag and this thing about this country. Okay. Why you, what's Korea? Mm. It hit me like a bullet in my stomach and I just start, I fell down and I started crying and I was like, God, you knew. And then man said, God gives you the desires of your heart. And I was like, he does. And he didn't know, but I was already looking into Korean stuff and I was trying to learn the language already. And he was just like reconfirming what I wanted to do with my life. I'm already making plans to go to Korea right now. I'm going to be going to Long Island and going to be going to Stony Brook there. And right after that, I'm planning on going to Korea, University of Korea. Uh, my prophecy was basically that I would be getting a new job opportunity. Uh, I'd be unqualified for the job. Better position and a higher position. And you, you uh, basically what I, what I see is that this position where God's going to put you, that you won't be qualified enough for that position. Okay. It's supernatural, it's God that's going to open that position because the word over this church is high positions. And you've got a good position, <laughs> okay? But God can, God's got a bigger desire, a bigger destiny for your life where He wants to put you in that, okay? You're going to be forced into it. <laughs> it's not something that you, um, you know, um, you're going to fight for or want. You're going to be forced to be burned to that position, to take that, that thing. It's also expansion of a lot of responsibility that's going to come with that, but you can handle it. You can handle it as a cup. Okay. The prophecy for me has really built my faith to look beyond the measure of man that's been placed on me through family ties and generational curses and whatnot that have been broken off my life, but I haven't seen come full to bear. And so 
with this prophecy, it gave me something to hold on to, to say, you know what, I'm not going to let go of this thing until I'm blessed. I'm not going to let go of this thing until I see that new job opportunity come forth. I'm not going to let go of this thing until, until God really takes himself at his word and pushes, pushes this into my life in some new way. Two weeks ago, I was contacted by a recruiter who uh, had found a job that fit pretty well with, with my qualifications uh, through Lockheed. And um, it was obvious that I was underqualified for the position. But I pursued it anyway, and I, I gave it to God. And um, I said, well, Lord, your word spoken through Andre said that I was going to have a job that I was unqualified for. So this looks like it's it. So if, it, if that's it, then bless it. If not, tear it apart. I don't want it. And so I, I prayed that prayer, and I gave it to God. And a, a week and a half later, they, uh, they gave me a call. They offered me the position. And uh, everything's been on rail since. I've gotten all the paperwork and everything, and I start next week. It's time for God's power to be manifested in your life. You, you have it, and I know you have it, but do you walk in it?